Hey, what's up guys? So Nino here today. I want to discuss a little bit um, more about 8-bit versus 16-bit data integrity in general and whatnot. You've probably seen demos like this, but I'm going to do the demo a little bit different today. Um, I think anyway, <laughs> to kind of give you some observations on 8 versus 16 and data compression in general. But I also want to talk a little bit too, um, a little bit later about why you might care or not care and when is it time to worry about it or stress about it or not okay so let's discuss this i have three copies of this image and i say copies but they've all been exported differently out of capture one from the raw so the one on the right here this is my 16-bit psd all the data i could possibly send out from the raw through capture one this is an 8-bit psd from capture one and then this is an 8-bit that was exported as psd and then saved as a jpeg 50 quality okay now we're going to talk about why all this makes a difference but the first thing i want to talk about the first thing i want to talk about if i were to double click and see this one at full size we see that it looks fine this is 16 bit we go to our jpeg compressed one oops one second okay and we see that arguably it's the same. And visually, it's basically the same. When you start looking at images a lot, you see differences in the highlights and the shadows and whatnot, because you can see the data compression. But basically, both of these shots, if you were to leave them as they are and export them for like Instagram or something, you're golden, you're good to go. There are differences, they're very minor, and you probably don't see them on the video, but you don't have a strong sense of like a data integrity problem. You don't feel that when you look at these. And these are two extremes. This is all the data that we can possibly send from Capture One. And this is um, all the data reduced and then reduced again. This is a min in between. It's a pure 8-bit um, from Capture One. Let's do a data analysis on this 16. Okay, so what we're going to do, there's a couple of different things that we do when it comes to analyzing bit depth. Okay, the first one is what I call data integrity stress test. Very common. You've probably seen it. We take a levels and then we take the output levels in. You know, like in this case, 115 and 140. And then we take the same levels on top, but we put the input levels 115 and 140. We're really minimizing its range and then we're expanding its range. And we turn that on on the 16 bit image. There is no difference. There is no discernible difference anyway. No difference that makes a difference, right? So that really helps us. It's like, okay, cool. That's what 16 bit can do. That's awesome. But on top of that, we're going to put a hue map analysis, which is made with some different layers and blend modes and whatnot. But we're going to turn on the hue map analysis. So if you do a lot of this sort of analyzing, you'll recognize immediately that, hey, this is a pretty clean hue map, you know, hue analysis, because there's not too much data noise. OK, now, if you turn it off for a second, the, the background is gray and her outfits um, white. Those are neutrals. And because of that, neutrals tend to be unpredictable or at least unexpected unless you're used to looking at it uh, when you do this kind of hue map. So this, this is pure hue. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty clean. On top of that, I have the stress test underneath already on. I turn that stress test on and off and there is not any significant difference. So I am pushing the boundaries of how much data I can squish, if you will, and then expand back out with levels. And on top of that, when I do a hue analysis, it's still really, really clean. And we're talking almost no difference because 16-bit is not a little bit more color and a little more data than 8-bit. It's a lot more. So let's go to our 8-bit image, okay? This is, again, not heavily JPEG compressed or anything like that. Let's take our test situation over there. Let's first start with our data integrity stress test. OK, you probably can see that already. You see the banding on the background. OK, remember that we're taking the levels and we're compressing and then we're bringing it back out. OK, essentially reducing contrast like crazy and then adding it back. And immediately, let's turn off the hue map on the 16. There is a very obvious difference. The gray banding is where the weaknesses will show themselves the most. We're going to explain how this is practically important to you or may or may not be. OK, now let's go ahead and pull over. Let's turn off the. Uh, data integrity stress test and let's pull over the hue map analysis onto the to the eight very very good result um without the stress test underneath it right so it's pretty good the hues are pretty great why because you started with a raw and then you downsampled for capture one downsampled into eight bit and it did it in a very good way everything from dithering and all those other things that it does capture one's great for exporting the hues are pretty damn clean i would say they're 98 percent the same as 16 Pretty, pretty good. However, there's not a lot of data to give in terms of dynamic range in there, but it's clean data until you put a stress test on it. Then it completely falls apart. And you might think, okay, not sure why you're showing me all this, but cool, thumbs up, stay with me, okay? 
Let's look at our JPEG compressed version, okay? Let's move some of these around a little bit. You know, let's shrink to 16. We know that one's clean. Okay, so here we have the JPEG compressed one, okay? Let's move over our stress test. Okay, it is basically the same result, except some of the blocking is worse, okay? So if you look like in here, you'll see on the right side here, see all this chunking and blocking on the background, which is where the main problem is noticed, but it's definitely also happening. Make no mistake, it's happening in here. It's just that it's an illusion to you, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's an illusion to you that this looks clean, that her face and skin and hair and all that looks clean. That's an illusion. But the blocking, the, 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 the chunking of the data is a lot worse on the compression, on the compressed one. So let's make it even worse. Let's put our hue analysis over. Okay. So as you can see, it's bad, but it's worse. All right. So you can see the small details. These, at least this banding in the back, back of the 8-bit is somewhat clean. Not really. And look at it just falling apart, turning into this pixel noise over here. So what does this show us? What does this mean? Well, obviously, it's pretty clear that when you don't have the data that you want, that when you start making changes, things fall apart. And you're like, okay, well, in that case, you've convinced me we're done here. I don't want to use 8-bit for anything. That's fair. But when you turn all these analysis off, they are effectively visually the same certainly the same when you put them on like Instagram or Facebook, they're basically the same. And you can argue all day that no, no, no. If I save a JPEG for my 16 bit, it'll be better for Instagram. Then you're probably fooling yourself. So why does it matter? What, what do we care about eight bit versus 16 bit? Well, this is supposed to be a very clean commercial looking shot, a skin retouch on this, potentially a light color grade and it's done. But when you're doing some, what they call heavy lifting on editing, you're going to add some heavy contrast to stylize it, and then you're going to color grade on it. That's when data can start really breaking down. Let's do some tests, okay? We're going to do these tests blind. In other words, I haven't, I haven't practiced this. Let's see if we can make things break down on these just with some creative decisions, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a pretty strong, uh, let's see, I just put one of these color lookup thing. There's a pretty strong color lookup on it. Okay. And then I'm going to take some brightness and contrast. I'm going to put it on luminosity blending mode and I'm going to increase the contrast, but also increase the brightness a bit, something like that. And then I'm going to do some levels compression, pretty strong, maybe even stronger than that, just to kind of get a look that I like. And then below that, I'm going to add some selective color. And I think I'll take some of the black down and then increase the magenta and yellow. And then on my mids, I might take this, I might take cyan up actually. Magenta's down, something like this. And I got all that happening. That's kind of cool looking. And then, yeah. And then I'm going to also create, I think, well, let me see. How about a new layer? Let's darken some stuff. Let, let's put a solid color of black. Okay, and then we're gonna do on the mask, we are going to mask out some areas to create a type of vignette effect maybe. Let's see. Let's see if this is gonna work. Okay, it's a little strong obviously, but we're gonna kind of build it up. Something like that. They're gonna make like a 50%, maybe a 40. All right, so we went from this to this. Let's look at our uh, stress test and hue analysis. Not bad. It's still pretty clean, right? Still pretty clean. Now, let's take all of our, our edits and see if they make a difference with our 8-bit um, and 16. This is going to be interesting. Now, because I have that drawn raster data of the uh, in there because of the mask, I'm going to hold down Shift when I drag these layers over, and that should align it. Now, of course, they're visually the same. What happens if we turn on our stress test? It's a problem, isn't it? You know what I mean? And as we start you know, exporting and changing and continue to modify, it's going to get worse in the 8-bit. And you guys probably can't see it, but there is a little bit of banding going on in this background, okay? And the details and the shadows and highlights are a little questionable on this one. Let's, uh, let's continue. Let's move them over to our compressed one. Okay, the banding is pretty significant here. It's all chunky and, and it's so hard to see, but you can probably see some of this data breaking down in here. See all of that? This is obviously pretty bad in that situation, but also on the 8-bit, the regular 8-bit, you look carefully in there, you will see the banding and all that, okay? And then here, 
It's always difficult to make these videos because uh, not only are you guys not looking at my screen, um, you're also looking at a video compressed version of everything. So you can't see everything as good as it can. This one, while it has noise in it, it's very, very clean. It's very, very good. You won't get unexpected colors if you print. You won't get unexpected banding that shows up out of nowhere because the printer is interpreting the data one way and then, you know, spewing out what it can. You know what I mean? So this one, if you look at this is the, the compressed JPEG. The data integrity is very bad. Data integrity on the 8-bit is bad, but not great. I mean, not, I mean, it's bad, but not as bad. And then on the 16-bit is still relatively clean. And these are not that heavy of an edit, right? So if we were to go here and work on our, let's work on our levels. If we work on our levels while we're looking at the, the analyzing, this is extreme. We're doing some extreme changes here. We can see the data starting to change on us. Okay, and then our selective color, Let's do something significant. Oh, okay. So we're having some changes there. Okay, so we have some severe banding. Let's delete that a second. And let's put over our same layers on our compressed. Okay, you can see huge chunks of data problems. Let's go back to our 16 and put our layers in there. Very, very different. See that? So when you're doing, and, and again, you might think, okay, I'll use 16. Thank you for your time, Nina. I understand that this is a pretty straightforward when you're doing extreme analysis, but when you're not doing extreme analysis, okay, when you're looking at a shot like this, okay, oh, I'm missing a layer here, there we go. All right, this one on the right, again, you can't see it very well, has, if you wanted this look for whatever reason, you have um, very minimal to no banding. You have banding here in the 8-bit and you have a ton of banding on the compressed one. And on top of that, color integrity is going to be sacrificed on prints. It's going to be sacrificed if you continue to edit it further. You may never edit a shot like this to look like this. But if you're doing heavy compositing and you have an element that you need to add and you need to modify the hell out of it, let's say it's a fantasy image and you have a gauntlet that you're replacing on a character and you have this image of a gauntlet and it's 8-bit JPEG compressed to all hell and you need to change it a lot. You need to change the contrast and the color a whole lot. It's going to fall apart on you data-wise and it's not going to look as great as the rest of your image. So sourcing your images for a composite to make sure that all what you're getting is 16-bit ideally, you shoot it all yourself or you get good quality images, it starts to break down. Heavy-handed edits like this, as you can see on the 8-bit compressed, okay, on the JPEG compressed, if you look at the 16 compared to it, Right behind her in the bright area of this green teal, it's still a nice green teal. Here, it's already broken down into banding and grays. We lost so much data pushing it that hard. Okay, so you might look at this and go, I don't like this. I wanted this color scheme and I wanted this intensity, but it just looks messy. And then you don't want to do it. You get a false positive. You don't know that it's data breaking down. You might not know, but you go, no, I pushed it too far. It looks bad. And then you look at your 16 version and you're like, actually, this is kind of clean. This is a, an absurd look for this shot. I don't like it, but if I wanted it, I would be more excited about the 16 version than this compressed version and definitely more than the 8. The 8 is better, but it's not as good. I'm starting to get false positives. I'm starting to get ideas that there's colors where there's not. And even though these are the exact same layers. And here again, if you were to do the uh, stress test and analysis to see what the data is doing, it really spells it out extremely well. 16 and 8 are already radically different and it just gets worse on the compress. Obviously, I'm not going to compress anything too heavy and show that because we know that's a problem. But hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, these stress tests, there's all kinds of different ways you can do them. But it's very, very obvious when you do it this way. But just keep in mind, if you have an 8-bit image and that's all you have or you exported a bunch of projects in 8-bit and you're like, well, I just watched this video and now I feel bad. I, I need to redo everything in 16. Relax, relax. What are you using it for? If it's for Instagram or Facebook and the vast majority of printing houses, if it's a clean shot and you didn't do any heavy, heavy modifications to it, you're okay. Just relax. However, a demo like this really gives you an idea of data integrity and on a strong workflow with a pro production team, uh, et cetera, where there's a lot happening on one image, maybe with two or three different artists and it's a, an intense composite, this data integrity is very, very important. And so we have to start thinking about that the more intense and advanced our projects get. But even for the individual, like I said, if you didn't realize that you're working with a compressed JPEG, that you exported versus the 16, this radical color scheme looks somewhat appealing here and it looks like a mistake here.
And that's because of the data integrity. Exact same procedures, exact same setups, but the data integrity gives you a false positive that you messed up. So keep that in mind. If you have any questions, drop us a comment below or email us, mbp at ninobatista.com. We're always happy to answer questions and help you out. I know these demos aren't the most practical thing for an artist. Uh, artists just want to make stuff look good. But just keep in mind, if you have no issue with you know, storage and capacity and processing, make everything 16 bit and roll with it and have fun. The last tip that I will give you is, um, you can't go from, uh, eight to 16. You can change an eight bit file here. Like here's the eight bit. I can go here and say, make it 16. That does not increase the data integrity of it. Okay. Anything I do from it from there, like add adjustment layers, it'll process at 16. But you can't go upward. The data is not there. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Changing to 16 bit is sometimes good for running specific processes. That helps a little bit, but you always are better off when you start with 16. Now, for those who don't know which one you're exporting, if you're like a Lightroom user and you just hit control or command E, edit in Photoshop, you're getting 16 bit maximum data possible. Um, because that's the default in Lightroom 99% of the time. So just keep that in mind. Any questions again, let us know. And I hope you enjoyed this little simple analysis.